Hello, good evening, and welcome to this space. It was not scheduled to happen, but uh, uh, based on how things are going, I think it's good that we talk to each other. And uh, since I'm not able to pick all calls, it's good that sometimes we have a space here publicly, which is like a public baraza, where you come, um, ask questions, give suggestions, say what you feel, what direction the, the, the movement is taking, um, whether it's a correct direction or the wrong direction, and how you think things can be done better. And, and if you've been disappointed by one, two or three things, it is also your moment to just voice that disappointment so that um, it is known that you're actually disappointed. Um, so I'll be giving the microphone to different people. I have invited uh, KOT Sonko to co-host. I've not informed him, but at least he's been up to task very quickly. So different microphones and it will be your opportunity to speak and um, just say your mind. Um, don't censor your words. Uh, don't... Um, don't try to be right. Just speak as it is, as it is coming from your heart. Uh, we are brave enough to handle it. Uh, and also, if it is wisdom, say it calmly and slowly. I'm here, I'm listening, and uh, I'm very interested in what you think and uh, what you think we are not doing well and how we can do it better. I'm um, currently out of Nairobi for another session of Vampire Diaries. Although I'm supposed to be on rest, but it's not possible. Stan. Rastan, take it away. Uh, you guys, uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Morara, hey bro, how are you? You guys. Very well, very well. Okay, uh, mambo ya salamu, hatunaiza mambo ya salamu, sisi wa, sisi wa heshimi wa sisi watu wa kawaida. <coughs> Mimi ngetaa kusema, kuna uh, senator moja alikuja na hiyo ishu ya uh, kuna uh, chapai litolewa, like I don't know how much was it, something with billions, like five billion ya refugees, na kauliza, that was like five months, four months ago, if I remember good, that clips Jay Potter tena so you guys uh, na nikiangalia hivyo naona yani uh, the Somalians uh, wana invade ni kama vile America vile wana uh, uh, you know invite people to vote for the party because they cannot win in the right way they cannot you know for they cannot be there for the people so you, you see, we are fighting the same entity. Now, I've been saying this for the last like uh, uh, three weeks now. Murara Ningeta Kawenda Kwa, to Koroga his Rekadi, Nede Kazimafanya, we like to give you a party when the Kwa Traore. Now, check it. Yeah. When the Kwa Traore, Captain, when the Kwa Baknafaso, when the Kwa Yulilak three days, we make the government crazy. Hap how to ongea uko vacation. That's what I was thinking myself. So to check if it is me to spend it, kwagava you guys. I don't talk slowly myself. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of things which have been going on in our country. We have mothers, fathers, children. You know, me. I'm a millennial. I'm 47 years old. So um, toto wote ako meaka below 28. Ni mtoto wangu. I can complain one, two, three. Last man appear. I'll appear. You know, and that's what happened. Kwa 25th. Mtu akisema ti millennials wafanyi kitu ama sisi hatufanyi kitu ni watoto wa nani wanaenda kwa kwa street ni watoto wetu ni watoto wetu hebu niambie nakubalisha mtoto wetu mzazi amekubalisha mtoto wake aende out aende afanye hiyo kitu ya serikali alafu mtoto anakufa nataka kuniambia sisi millennials hatu sacrifice so we don't go there we don't blame each other we are one now <coughs> Everything has happened. Kumekona hiyo impeachment na what that politics. You guys don't want to talk too much about that. But I would like to be around. Also to hear you. You are just opened. I love you. Do what you have been doing, Morara. Let me tell you, Morara. And everybody who is there. If anything happens to you, you know you have pushed our country forward. 
you must know that you have pushed our country forward, our country, not only yourself, our country, okay? Thank you. you so give much. the pass on to the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Go on. Thank you so much, Rastan. Thank you. Uh, Toria, to your moment, take it away. Toria, be what? Okay. Uh, I hope you guys are good and I'm also good. I don't know what we are actually talking about, but I hope it's about our country and the way it's forward. It's a general conversation. It's a general conversation about our country. We just say your feelings. You know, sometimes when we give a topic for the conversation, people have other burning issues and they are unable to bring them forth because um, the topic has been set. So today we just want to have a general conversation. Just talk like someone who is talking to a group of friends. Okay. Um, personally, on my side, I think we have a lot to tackle as a country, and uh, a lot of distractions are being raised from different perspectives with by different people and the political class. We should avoid them. We have the Adan, which is uh, taking over almost everything in our country. We need to find a way or a solution to curb this disaster because uh, we all know that and the MPs are the biggest disaster in this country. If we can find a way, if it means it's going back to the streets or whichever way that can work for us to reclaim our country back, then let's focus on that. Let's bring all our efforts together and channel it towards one direction that is reclaiming our country and uh, good governance. That's things which we've been asking uh, from the government did not listen to us they showed us that even if we talk how they they will not listen to us so it's upon us we do we force them to listen to us through the channels those we're gonna think of they're gonna work for us missing a mengi i think unity strategies it's gonna work for us whoever is against ruto i support you because i really need the best for my country and a better kenya thank you thank you so much toria b what thank you so much uh laura okal is your internet okay you had complained about the sound how is it now Ah, I'm here, my, the sound is okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, Morara, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be talking to everyone else, including you. You're doing a great job. You could feel that you're one person and maybe sometimes you're overwhelmed. But uh, believe you me, millions of people are behind you. I like the um, way the conversations are going. Even if we don't seem to achieve whatever it is that you have started now, at least you have uh, planted a seed, and this seed is um, good governance, and that is what we require in this country. Kenya and Africa at large is a beautiful place. You don't realize these people until you just take a plane and leave this country. More so when you go to Europe or you go to America. You just realize how God has blessed us with beautiful weather, and we take it for granted. Our leaders really, really let us down. So there is a conversation that I feel that uh, anybody who is in this space, and if you occupy any space that you are occupying, is the conversation of the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission, IEBC. That's a conversation that we have to have, no matter how small, but they should know that we have not forgotten about it. Whoever is our president, I don't even want to mention his name, he doesn't talk about it anymore. All his um, colleagues and the people, his partners in crime, nobody talks about it. But I feel it's a conversation that we have to talk about it. They should know that we have not forgotten, that we don't have an IEBC and we need an IEBC. Everybody else who still believes in this journey, it is not lost. We are not going to achieve these things overnight. Let's keep pushing whichever way that you can help. Keep healthy, keep helping. And Morara and your team, I feel... 
it is not lost and it is it is going to be a long journey and i can see it coming i don't know how long it's going to take changing minds is not easy but i know there is a big 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 population that is behind you and is just waiting to see how this conversation is going to go people who are still stuck to the ways that are they are used to politics of tribalism of violence of greed and all that um it will come down and it will come down really really hard so we are still hopeful that um things are going to change and they are going to change for good let me give a chance to somebody else to talk and uh kenya ni home bye people amazing kenya ni home na kenya ni nyumbani i like it when you finished and signed out by saying kenya ni nyumbani um regarding the ipc Uh, I'm told that there is a case in court uh, beginning with the political parties tribunal and also in the high court but these are fake cases these are cases where William Ruto uses a, a, a proxy to go and file a case so that he delays the formation of the IEPC. Uh, my, my theory is that William Ruto does not intend to have an election in 2027. He knows that he will lose that election. If you see the ground and how hostile the ground has been, including in his own home when they were doing public participation, you could see the sentiments from Kericho, Bomet, Nandi. He knows he's lost it. He knows if an election was uh, held today uh, whether it's free or fair even if he rigs he cannot win that election because the margin will be so big so i don't think he intends to have an election in 2027 i think probably he wants to buy time and uh, either not have an election or pass this law that they've brought to parliament for extension of term limits or buy himself more time to finish off all his opponents so that in case there is an election in 2027 he he garners like 98% of the vote like the way it happens in Rwanda uh, with Kagame uh my thoughts my thoughts are that we will never get to 2027 Kenyans are so impatient and very angry you know uh sometimes probably because people stay on x so much they forget that there is a world out there and that there are people out there who also have feelings and they are expressing them on tiktok and on facebook i can tell you kenyans are very very angry extremely angry and i don't think uh they will reach 2027 i even doubt that they will finish 2024 but if they do i don't think they'll finish 2025 these kenyans are so angry that they are just waiting for one trigger and once they get a trigger like this they're going to explode because what work on asira everywhere i don't know a single person even within my family who is not angry with this regime not not just disappointed but extremely angry so whatever he is planning for 2027 i don't even think he will get there my worry is that uh, if kenyans explode then it may also run out of control and somebody else may take advantage that's why we must begin shaping the conversation this early Okay, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Um next is uh, the real Joe. The real Joe, I can see your internet is still connecting. Are you able to speak? All right, not so much. Are you are you the sixth? Um it's your moment. Take it away. Kyoti, I think we've lost. We have an issue. Yes, I don't. Sorry, come back again, Kyoti. Check in. All right, guys. I've, I've lost Kyoti. Can we have someone else uh, speak? Uh Fred Polo you are here. Good evening everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Right, guys. Thank you very much Morara and team. It's a, a pleasure being here on the press this platform. One thing I would love to commend everyone is the effort everyone is putting to make this group a success. 
it is going to be wise for us to be clever and ahead of everything we are doing to know how frustrating the government is going to frustrate everyone who is going to fight for this particular cause. I know we are aware on how they have been uh, trying to show some threats so that at least people do not come out, but everyone should be have the courage to always stand up at any given time. The ground is boiling. The ground is boiling. It will not evaporate, but before it does, we, all, we, we will all be on the streets trying to reclaim what belongs to us. The threats are there, but kindly, wherever you are, Morara, I, I, I saw one of your posts whereby you somehow felt you were let down. I would like to encourage you to keep fighting. We were there with you, yes, but not physically. Some of us were held up doing other activities. But for those who have a chance to be together with you kindly, keep doing so. We will support you with whichever means we can if you cannot be there physically. But kindly, kindly, everyone else, please don't lose hope. The threats will be there. The threats will be piling. We will be set against each other like the rumor which was going on who was the mall and who was not the mall. That's those are the, there to make sure that the group does not continue. We will be set against each other to fight each other, which we should. That, that, that's not our intention. Our intention to make sure that we fight for the good cause of the country, but not to harm any of us. Kindly, those who are in this platform, those who you speak with, kindly know Kenya is almost going to their dogs. We call it a banana republic. The laws being passed. They have majority in parliament, they have majority in, sorry, in both parliaments, so they can pass whatever laws they feel they can. They vote opposition, now the government can do whatever they want to do. There is no country, gentlemen. If you ask me, there is no country, and if you can have a good focus on the country, we don't have a country. The country belongs to one person who can do anything they feel they are comfortable doing. Healthcare is a mess. You saw even that we cannot get the right polio vaccine for our kids. Education is a mess, meaning we know you know in a few years' time you're not going to have the best brains like we already had in this country. Businesses are a mess, taxes are also being introduced here and there, meaning we, there will be no money circulating in the market to frustrate us in a way that we have to humble ourselves with the one bob, two bob we already have. Kenyans, it's time we get out. If someone of us says we can get to 2027, can we even can, will we have will we have the energy to get to 2027? I doubt. We are lucky enough. We are approaching the end of this 2024. But if the few of us will get to the end of this year, appreciate and make sure that when the year clocks, we come back bigger and better. Uh, Valentine, Morara, to get to the state down. house. No, Morara, space refresh kindly. Uh, Morara, uh, kindly, can you do just you do that? Sorry for that. <laughs> okay, Fred, just finish. Uh, to scared, but I... uh, sorry, I was saying I would like to see where the 14th of uh, February we have our first celebration as a country having good leadership, a new leadership in this country, which is Morara and team. Congratulations to all and thank you and have a good weekend for everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Fred Polo. Um, indeed, uh, you've pointed something that is very important, which is uh, that when we fight among us ourselves, none of us wins anything. In any case, all of us lose everything because you are fighting for good governance. I am fighting for good governance. We are all fighting for an end to corruption. We are fighting for an end to uh, tribalism. We are fighting an end to poor leadership and poor policies and bad health care and expensive education. We are fighting for the same thing. So if we fight each other just because maybe you want to show me that your ego is bigger than mine and I want to show you that I also have one, at the end of the day, we both lose and, and we make uh, corrupt politicians very happy by fighting amongst ourselves. I believe we can do better 
and we can do okay but also you know to avoid fights let's stop provocation you know sometimes those fights begin because one person provokes another with things that are purely uh, uh, very insensitive or very uh, disruptive or an insult so when we do that essentially not everybody is soft not everybody can ignore an insult others feel that lazima uh, arudishe then we end up uh, having so many fights the other thing we should know is that we are not all fighting for the same mission we should know that we have enemies among us and those enemies are not even in pseudo accounts some of them are even twitter bigwigs they are ex bigwigs on x they have thousands or millions of followers we have enemies within remember the state if it can afford 104 billion for a healthcare system to steal the money it means they can buy you know people you never thought they can buy and for that reason there are people you trust as a source of truth but they may be enemies enemies within you know to cause destruction or, or, or rather to just come and um, bring attack so that you can fight each other uh i will advise my friends and the rest of you that uh, if someone attacks you the best thing is you know but if you ignore so much and you realize that they are almost now cyberbullying you, of course, it will now be important that you take action or and you call them out. But otherwise, let us forge a united front. I, I believe we are beginning to be very disjointed and very disunited. And that is also because everybody has brought their political and financial interest. There's the interest of civil society groups, NGOs who are funding uh, some ex big wigs to drive us particularly agenda there is the agenda of billionaires and uh, state captors who have also recruited ex big wigs to also drive their agenda there are people who are just driving their own agenda in their own right there are others who are seeking good governance there are others who are blogging for a particular politician so don't trust everything that you see on social media for example some of the negative comments that you might see on your posts some of them are not organic they are not real people answering you some of them are just uh, bloggers who each of them has registered probably 20 30 accounts you find one person with 20 accounts and maybe they're being paid by some politician to drive a certain narrative so you find that whenever you say something that is good for kenya they are very dismissive but we have to be strong we have to develop a tough skin our fight is not a small fight if you're going to fight corruption or bad governance you should know that it is going to fight back so if you are if you have a light skin it's going to get into you uh, tdjx always says that uh, ships don't sink because they pass through water but they sink when water passes through them therefore it's not what has gone around you that is the problem but when what is going around you starts getting into you that is when it becomes a problem and sometimes I, I you know I'm a human being sometimes I feel disappointed sometimes I feel disgusted sometimes I feel angry yeah anger was put there by God it's not certain that put anger in human beings it's God God put anger in us so that we can be impatient with mediocrity so sometimes I'm angry but um, it doesn't mean that I don't have a clean heart or that I don't wish well it is just because sometimes I don't like the direction that things take and that is normal even you you are entitled to be angry but in all things let's reason together and see whether we can pull forward so that even if we make one step backwards we still make three steps forward so that uh, we are making progress amazing i guess i've given you guys direction now there's a guy here called be real be real come on take the mic Yeah, he is here, or he or she. Did he say be real? Uh, <laughs> Willie Davido, uh, please mute your mic. Yo, yo. Be, be real, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Ah, fantastic. Now, take good it evening, away and speak your mind. Yeah, good evening. Uh, it's nice to have you here. First of all, I want to commend what you're doing. Uh, 
what he actually doing but now being on the forefront it's a bigger picture and uh, i'll only pause for you a few questions because you highlighted uh, a talk that is actually going on right now and i'll ask you a few questions what is your objective what drives you and you cannot respond to everything that comes across you you have to take responsibility for every action because right now when you're voicing out you can voice behind you we can voice in front of you and we can voice beside you but at the end of the day you still need your sanity to keep you sane but if you're going to respond to everything you're going to delete yourself and your mission and then you're going to take us again back steps five times if you're going to respond to everything like i wanted you to approach the issue that came on online about qt being a mall when you open the first space, because since that thing came about, uh, you haven't uh, spoken in any space, I presume. You first clear your friend because you've hosted spaces. You've done so many hours. You've done 24 hours. I've co-hosted with QT. And I, 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 I backtracked when I was losing my mental sanity because of this overwhelming thing. And I know you can trip, but still, you need to be respectful. There are people that if they engage you, you need to take a pause before you respond. Not for the sake of responding, but for the sake of your eligibility and for the sake of your self and your mission. So whatever we are doing right now, it's a fight that is very strong and you don't know you're fighting whom. Today I can be your team, tomorrow I'm not. Based on whoever is surrounding me. So the action is good, the motive is good, we are objective, but we don't want to be deleted. So delusion, let's avoid it at all costs. Always try to be respectful, even if somebody is coming very insulting. Just for your own sanity and for your own self, because right now you're flying a flag that is beyond you. It's not about Morera anymore. If you realize that, you take it a pause and have a meeting with yourself. I guess we are losing the real. I don't know if you can hear her clearly. If From you can side, hear me, if you can hear me, give me a hundred. I'm still speaking. If you can hear me, give me a hundred. Then QT, I think you have to drop and come back. So if you, if it's it's a very it's, it's a very tiresome journey. Sorry, QT, I think you drop and come back. Uh, Morera will add you again. Uh, if you, if you, if you watch where we've come from and where we are holding, where we're holding, we're getting closer to the direction, but still far from it. It's always called too close to call. So as we're teaching and learning from each other, empowering and educating each other, we learn every day and we borrow a leaf. And before you respond, take a pause. I responded to that comment very respectfully. And uh, I would urge you to like try and reread any point that you respond to, especially from where you stand right now. I yield my mic. I'm wishing everyone the best in everything. The online thing can be very trolling and very exhausting. So the moment you take a breather, the way sometimes you take a breather, and sometimes the when you come out and, and blow it all on us, it's also allowed. But all of it has to happen in a very respectful way because of who you now carry. You're not the normal Morara that you used. You're carrying a very heavy flag. I wish us the best. Let's not tire. Let's still forge ahead. The vision is still with us and we are going to attain it, however exhausting. It never comes easy. It comes after hard work. And here we are, toiling and trailing. Let's keep each other. Let's hold our feet together. And let's always pray with each other. Thank you, guys. Have a lovely evening. Thank you so much for being real. Um, and let me also say from the onset that uh, if I've done anything that uh, disappoints you, I'm sorry and I apologize. Um, I'm still growing and uh, also discovering myself. That's not an excuse, but that is also to say that uh, uh, sometimes I can get provoked and probably I can say something that is displeasing, uh, but I apologize for that. So now um, you ask me, what my motivation is and what drives me and all i can tell you is that um, i like to see kenya to be free i like a country where the economy is growing and um, uh, 
and uh, there's enterprise and people are making their own money. I like to see a Kenya where there's good health care, good education. And I know these are things that politicians say all the time, but personally, I, I, I really want to see that. Uh, and um, more especially, I'm not very interested. Uh, I'm not entirely interested in being uh, a political leader. That is something that has just come. It is not something I was planning or strategizing for. Nikitu imenipata along the way, nikapata, you know, suddenly I'm in this space. But actually, my bigger passion is to be a business person. So I really want to see a good economy where I can make my money and do my own things and uh, do my own investments. That is what I want from Kenya. I want a good education. I want uh, good health care, uh, protection of local markets. I like an end to corruption so that there is money available for development. I would like to see a Kenya where leaders are accountable, where leaders actually fear the people and, and uh, they don't, you know, uh, lord over the people. They are not the people's landlords. They, 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 they actually know that they are serving people. So that is the kind of Kenya that I want and I want to see it during my lifetime. I, I don't want to do it for my children. I want to do it for myself. I want to see it when I'm alive. And um, that's now from a personal point of view, how what I want, I as Morara Kebaso, but I believe there is something that everybody else wants and um, that is why we are having this conversation today because as you can see from the topic it says 2027 is far let us talk, it is too far because we are already going through too much and we are impatient with this kind of mediocrity we are impatient with the kind of life we are living and we don't think that if we keep living this life to Tafika 20 so something needs to happen and that is why we are here to reason together and have everybody say what's going on on their mind and what do they think should be done or hasn't been done and so on and so forth. Uh, Mr. Tony, Tony uh, Wakaromo, take it away. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me, Murara? I'm having some connection issues up if, if you can hear me, can you give me a link? Oh, thank you, thank you. So, I just want to... I just want to ask everybody on this space a question. Everybody who is a Kenyan. Guys, what are we waiting for? What triggers are we waiting for? What signs are we waiting for? If we give this government time, so far, it's destruction after destruction after destruction. Akuna justification, akuna anything else we are waiting for. We should be thronging the streets like today. All those jobs, employments, companies you guys think you have, you think you are protecting, there will be no more if things continue like this. Why are we giving anybody time in this country? Nini hapa tunongea English mingi, well, because what I want right now, myself, I'm talking about myself, what I want Sahi is being surpassed by my future, because there is no future to go into. Sijui ni nini English mingi tunaongea sana, tunaongea, why can't we down all our tools just for one week and we throng those streets? If they kill us, they kill us. Because right now, everybody in Kenya, ages zote, millennials, wale waze, everybody, farmers, they are angry. Ninini tunafanya, tukiongea, ninini sasa tunaongea sahi hapa. Why are we giving anybody time? If you give this guy time, he comes up with something else. Baka ile siku yenye tutamua, we are doing something, atakuwa several steps ahead. Everybody should think, to Julize, what are we doing? Ninini tunangoja, what are we doing right now? Thank you. Kyoti Sonko, I thought you were here as a co-host. Kwani internet imekata kabisa? Kyoti Sonko, are you here? All right, he's not here. Uh, Ayo, the sixth, it's your moment. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me? Please confirm you can hear me. 
I don't know if my network is stable or not. Uh, 100% yes. Thank you very much. Kiyotia kwa hapa natupigia mia na kiitwa menyamaza. Anyway, here's the thing, yeah. Uh, first of all, good evening, Morara. How are you? I hope you're well. Very well, very well. Ayo, I am fine and I'm grateful to God that I'm fine. I'm grateful that we are all well and alive and we saw this day. It's a privilege. I have a few things to mention. And um, uh, number one, I want to reiterate on uh, what the other lady said, uh, that Morara, uh, and this is my message to you, um, I tweeted you the other day, I don't know if you saw the tweet, probably you've been so much uh, held up and I completely understand. And my plea to you was to, you need to, you, right now from where you sit or where you stand, I believe uh, this movement is no longer about a single person you represent a lot of voices and it's a very very huge responsibility bestowed upon your shoulders and i know sometimes it might be so heavy i know maybe you might not have been ready for this moment and it just came and you have to take it with all the responsibility it deserves and uh sorry i'm going to be a bit harsh at this moment but the truth might be so so much harsh and unbearable at times, but it is what it is, it's the truth. Um, if I understand quite well, right now, Morara, you speak for so many voices. A lot of people look up to you. People have given up in the leadership that's, that is currently uh, a, leading the country. And people are looking at a different voice, a voice that can speak clarity, a voice that can speak for them, and a voice that understands them. Because whoever is in government right now conned people that are uh, uh, only to realize that they voted in a con man. So people are looking at a different voice. Nobody believes in the opposition, nobody believes in the ruling government, people are looking at Morara. You know why people are looking at Morara? Because Morara came out uh, as a person of integrity, Morara came out as a, as a voice of the people, Morara came out as someone who speaks for the millions of Kenyans who are, are, are voiceless. And so what does that mean? That means anything you say most of us are looking at this is the direction we want to face. So if you tell us, guys, we are going left, all of us are going left with you. But if you leave us in a limbo, we don't know what to think. The current government is taking advantage of that. They are seeing that, oh, tumewamaliza mahali. That's the same thing that happened with mandamano. Wali tumaliza kwa mandamano wakasema, ah, tumeweka chini. And what I've learned from the few leadership seminars I've, I've, I've gone in, I've stepped into, is a, a, a good leader takes responsibility, rejects passivity, and leads courageously. So if you came out to be that leader that we want to look up to. You have to stand up tall with your head high regardless of the challenges. Right now, nobody thinks that there are challenges. Or yes, there are those challenges. You're supposed to stand tall and tell us, ladies and gentlemen, as much as there are challenges, I'm going to speak up for you guys. So I was a bit disappointed when my brother KOT was being thrashed with bloggers online, uh, the Wakisema KOT ni, uh, ni, 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 ni mall and all that I expected you not to subtweet but to stand tall and say ladies and gentlemen, KOT is not a mole. KOT is a my brother and you are working together and ata, adini likuja ni kambia wase ata kama KOT ni mole so what? He is who he is ye mtu wetu, tume struggle na ye kwa mandamano, tume pigwa na ye tear gas, tume kunyo na ye tear gas and you have to protect him so anybody who, who did not come out from mandamano be just because they are a blogger coming out and saying oh the, the, the mabonga 254 is, is, the, is the mall, I was so disappointed the best thing you could have done as our leader, let me now brand you that, our leader because right now, whose voice is most, mostly heard, you, forget about Takina Kasamu we are looking at Morara Morara Kenya Mesema ndiyo tuna support so you are supposed to come up and say 
do a tweet or even do a press conference or whatever it is you, you do even record yourself with, with your phone and post on your twitter with all your followers and say that you know what ladies and gentlemen i hear this issue going online they're saying that kot is a mole mabonga is not a mole marvin mabonga is on our side he's speaking for the people because i know kot personally we've hosted spaces we've uh, civic educated people we've talked to people and we've built that reputation not to lie on the side of the government who that has been killing our, our brothers and sisters. That is number one. Number two, Morara, is uh, right now people are getting tired. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, I've been, I've been hearing people speak left, right, and center. And say, oh, uh, um, to chosha, sasa. Ata, uh, kulu, kulu, kulu relevancy. Nini? I don't want to hear that, brother. I want you to be the leader that God chose you to be. You can't say that you're not ready for this. When Moses was chosen, when he was a, a stammerer, they, nobody cared whether he was a stammerer. Alipewa yo position na kasema ataifanya. And he did what he had to do. So you also, I'm, I'm putting this heavy load on you, you are the leader. Be the leader that you're supposed to be. Do not show any disparity. Do not show that you're weak anywhere. Do not even, even come on Omiya, to pigie simu tuonge when it's weaker. Don't show the people that you're weak. Don't show your enemy your weak points. Once you show you the enemy your weak points, that is upon the open to me kukumaliza. So from where you see it, I know it is tough. I know it is difficult. But what Whatever it is, take it up. The mantle is on you. We are looking at you. Na juata wetu nguna sema, huyu morara hata na pesa hawezi kwa president. We don't give a damn. We don't. Stay strong, be strong, and we will follow you. Give us a reason to follow you. Give us a reason to... Hata tutachanga pesa, ukwe kwa ballot. Tutaona venye utaka kwa hiyo ballot. So what you need to do is be who you be. I, I know it, it, it might be so much. Kuna joto jingi sana. But bro, God has already given you this mantle. You can't start complaining. This is not the time to start complaining. This is the time you pick up that mantle and go with it. Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the uh, circumstances that are befalling you and, and the uh, whatever is dragging you behind, chukwa your mantle and an ayo. We will we will rally behind you. We will to 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 support. Eriwende waibe kura patuna chuo tulifika muisho. Una get? Eriwende ufiki uko muisho atakama watafanya kijana watafanya nimona omenza kupiga ni 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 kutuma mavijana na kumiza. We will. Lazima kukwena challenges. We are struggling among watu wenye waliba Kenya kitambo. This is old money. Akina ruto ni watu wali nini pesa. This is old money we are competing with. Sisi tulizaliwa juzi. Atuna do. Atuna yo pesa. Ase wakona do. Billions. Waneza fanya Kenya. Ata waneza buy IBC yote. But we don't care. We just want to see that the person that uh, alichukwa hii mantle alifika to the very end. And I'll tell you for a fact, people are all, all, already saying you are a project of Sji who and who and who. Don't give them a reason to think that way. Stay true to your course. Do what you got to do. You already now have an office. Uh, you, had, you had a car. You have whatever. Do what you have to do. And let's keep the course going. Don't even say that we are resting. There's no time to rest. He's not resting, that old man over there at State House. He's not resting. Tumpati sleepless nights. Adi by the time we are taking this thing, atajwenye ya vijana walifanya kazi. 2027, si mbali. It's a few weeks away. 2027, si mbali. Tuko 2024 size, we are closing it up. We are wrapping up 2024. We're getting into 2025, 2026. Two years to elections, guys. 24 months it is not far tafadhali na waomba and if you if we have to support you give us a reason to support you morara tafadhali sorry i've hogged the mic for too long but i just feel like i needed to empty this from my heart it comes from a very uh, loving point of view from a very caring point of view from a very concerned point of view not from criticizing i'm seeing this because i care about the movement and to metokambali na movement na tunaenda far let's not give them a reason to kutumaliza completely let not Rex, Masai, and everyone that died during uh, during the reject finance bill uh, movement. You came up. I could have come up, but I was like, no. Now God gave you that mantle. Don't waste it. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Ayo. Um, those are words of wisdom coming from a brother in love and uh, spoken with a lot of love and care. And I appreciate them and I accept where we've gone wrong. Uh, as regards uh, KOT Sonko being a, a mall or not being a mall, it's simple, uh, and I've said it when I began, and I'll say it again. Uh, KOT Sonko is not the mall I was talking about. And uh, the reason he was not there when bombers happened is because he himself was being pursued by DCI and had to run to Mombasa. And uh, he was even called and threatened. Uh, the reason probably that I didn't speak too early or when, when, when he was being trolled online is because I myself, I was not online. At that time, I was going through a lot myself. And uh, you see, sometimes you have two, three battles fighting at the same time. You've been arrested, this is happening, this other thing is happening. So you're even exhausted with fighting. You don't even know which one to begin with. So, uh, but uh, at least I have set the record straight that that, that, that is not the case. Uh, my, my mole is known, he, he disappeared. He's not been to the office anymore. Most of you know him. Um, it is sad that that had to happen because you see that mall would have risked our lives. He would have killed us all. He would have even poisoned us. So we're very lucky to be alive. But um, when it comes to this issue of uh, being a project of so-and-so, a project of so-and-so, one of the things we need to understand is that uh, most Kenyans don't believe that a young leader can rise on their own right. Most Kenyans actually don't believe that. Uh, most believe that if a young leader is rising, then there is a big godfather somewhere behind supporting them. But in this particular case, yes, we've risen and we'll continue to rise. And I'm not rising alone. I'm rising with others. Uh, there are many, many people I'm coming up with me. And uh, there are many, many people I'm also mentoring to fight this battle with me because uh, we need to feel leaders of integrity in every position, not just in the national government, in the presidency, but even in the governor, senators, we need them, M MPs, 290 of them uh, or 400 of them. We need uh, women reps, we need uh, MCAs. We are actually bringing up and mentoring leaders of integrity. Chenyanezambia vijana wa Kenya ni mjiamini. Musipo jiamini hakuna mtu atawamini. And I really want to be grateful to what the millennials and the Gen Xs have done. Many people don't appreciate your sacrifice. Uh, some people belittle it and say, our millennials, our Gen Xs, our Tusaidi, uh, kazi sasa ni Gen Z pekea wamefanya. But no, I, I don't think so. I believe you've done an extremely good job and you've really picked it up and joined us and fought with us. And we'd like you to continue fighting with us because every single Kenyan is tired of bad governance. Mr. Ayo, I take your sentiments very positively. Um, and um, I don't want to dilute them by trying to argue my way out of it or to defend myself. I'll just take them positively and do what is needed to be done. Asante. All right. So, uh, uh, Kyoti Sonko, is your network okay now? Akiwati Sonko, give me a hundred if you're still here. Eh, shida. Akiwati Sonko, bado, bado, bado. All right. Yeah, so, Mwero. I'm actually using, like, like ah. three, three, three. Akiwati Sonko, give me a hundred if you're still here. I can hear you. Hope you can hear me because I'm, I'm opened on another mic and I can hear you. Eh, shida. Murara Keotia naongea, wendi uwezi msikia. Keotia naongea, wendi uwezi msikia. Ok, kama naongea na siwezi msikia, let me open the space on another phone, nitasikiza kwa zote mbili. So, Mweru, is it Mweru or which is which? What's the proper way of pronouncing it? Is it Mweru or Mweru? Mweru. <laughs> okay, Mwero. Hi. You come from him. Yeah. No, hey, don't even go there. 
uh, this, this, this is a name okay. brand, my TM. <laughs> All right. The reason I ask is because uh, there's a vampire diaries I did, and there was an area somewhere in Meru that was called that name. But it's okay. Just take it away. <laughs> yeah, I'm kicking you. But anyway, it doesn't matter. But um. So first of all, I, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate uh, what you're doing, you and your team. I appreciate everybody on this space and Kenyans in general who are doing something towards uh, fighting bad governance. Me, I live in the diaspora. I've not lived in the country for almost 20 years, but I love my country. And also, you know, the thing is, I, I do not want to undermine the fact that you, you are a human being, Barara. And uh, I just wanted to know how, how are you doing? We saw, we saw how you were physically assaulted in Bomas. How are you doing physically? How are you doing mentally? That is my first question is to just make sure you're okay. Uh, also, I know, I mean, I appreciate the fact that you, you've been bold. You're willing to fight for the country. You have put your life in danger. You have a young family. And, you know, as we know, as we all understand how this government operates, you've essentially placed your kids in danger too by default. But we, and we appreciate that sacrifice. Um, so my first question was, how are you doing physically? I know you suffered, I listened to uh, an interview you did and you suffered injuries on the neck and injuries on the head. So give us an update on how you're doing physically when you have a moment. A few things I agree with you is in the whole idea of the funding, the campaign funding. I live in the United States and right now we are in the election year. And I agree with what you're doing. You're having Kenyans commit to you by donating money to you. Right now as we're speaking, I just received a, a text message from Kamala Harris asking for $40. I received another one from Donald Trump asking for I don't know how much. So asking for money is completely okay. If, if you want to run for office, and join governance and be a source of good governance for Kenyans. Yes, Kenyans should support you if they expect you to serve them. So I agree with that. Um, the only question I have in regards to that, because I've seen a lot of um, questions and concerns coming from the Kenyan people. I have listened to one of the interviews with, you did with Lynn Gugge and you disclosed you raised up to, I think, $3 million at the time. How is it possible for you to sort of provide some form of figure of how much you've raised just to answer questions that Kenyans are raising in terms of um, the amount you've raised? And possibly if it's safe to stay, just give some form of accountability in that regards of the funds you have raised and how you're spending them. Um, I know we have a lot of key issues going on. We have the IBC thing, we have the Adani thing, we have the GMO, we have education. We have a, we're awfully aware of these things that are going on. I, I, I just thought what, today, I mean, I'll say, for instance, after witnessing what the MPs did the other day, that was, was brutal. I, I just read, maybe I read too much into it. But to me, I have personally accepted the reality. We are under a dictatorship. And for that to me is, 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 is key for us to realize the urgency of the situation that we're in. As we're speaking, we know Adani has taken over. And I keep saying, this is a beginning. What we know so far about Adani is what has either been disclosed by somebody or they're having to disclose because they know we'll find out. But there's still some other things that we haven't found out. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand what is going to be the cost of response towards some of these things that are going on in terms of protests and what are we going to do about it? And, and mostly I just want to hear what you think we should do about this going forward. The other thing is to just sort of advise you in regards to just to sort of manage your expectations when it comes to people. Um, I know I saw a, a tweet that you posted that you have certain numbers of followers, but when only 30 people showed up for you. I think going forward, I mean, just to be on the safe side and to anticipate human beings to just operate out of human nature, just don't always expect, don't be too expectant in this. I think you should learn to sort of expect the worst and, and like let the best surprise you. That is sort of my principle, but maybe that is being too overly defensive or protective of myself. But I would advise you to just have grace with human beings and in, in, the, in the process, expect human beings to be human. 
expect the worst and let the best case scenario <laughs> scenario just surprise you. The other thing I, I was wondering about is having seen what happened in Bomas, because my first question was, what were you even doing there? And I've seen you address this. I've listened to some of the follow-up interviews you've done. How are you going to manage your scheduling going forward in the sense that I believe in essentialism. It's a book. I don't know if you've read that book, Essentialism, in the sense that less is more. And my proposal initially, my response is you need to sort of reduce and limit your your uh like your appearances you need to reduce them but i'm pretty sure you've already figured that out but sort of give us an idea of going forward how are you going to to manage all this because personally for me i want to see you i, I want you to be safe i want you to be our president if you decide to end to take up on that responsibility um, the other thing is, I just wanted to acknowledge you because um, I have a few people in the in the diaspora and in my family that some of them have vowed that if you run for president, they are willing to go as far as coming back to Kenya to vote for the first time ever. They have never voted in Kenya. These are people in their forties. But I wanted to acknowledge some some qualities about you that I really have really inspired me. And the one thing I, some of them, I actually wrote them down. The one thing that actually sort of drew me to you is the fact that you're a very intentional person. You seem to be very, very intentional. You're very proactive about what you want, and you seem very well calculated and very, very decisive. You're also very, very bold and very intelligent. And it and it's very inspiring, not to forget that. But the one thing that I feel like you're bringing to the table in this political scene in Kenya, where people are basically experiencing political fatigue from these old politicians and all these old scenes and issues that these people represent and have provided to Kenyans, is a is the fact that you're bringing some innocence. Some innocence that Kenyans are sort of thirsting for, and is very, very refreshing. And, and as much as most people don't agree or support Obama, I remember I was in the United States, and that is the sort of thing that the sort of dynamic, the, the one thing he brought, he brought a, a fresh, a fresh that he was like this person that was everybody was thirsting for, and inspired a lot of people to even go and register to vote and all this. He presented a fresh alternative and somebody that people could relate to and identify with. Because as we speak, I, I personally, I don't even relate to somebody like Ruto. I'm not a billionaire. So a lot of Kenyans will relate to you. So you do have a huge responsibility bestowed upon you by default, whether you like it or not. And I agree with what some of the speakers like uh, Ayo said, which I, 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 from listening to you in several interviews, it feels like you're ready to take on. So my, my advice is go, just do it, you know, just do it, go all the way. And let, and, and, and we'll be here to support you. KOT and Mariah, I'm so happy to see you two working together. I know there's been some scandals, whatever, blah, 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 that were pop, you know, going on on the internet, but I'm glad that is resolved. That's how life is. We work things out. All right, go ahead, Mariah. I talked a lot, but I hope you were able to note some of the questions that I was hoping you would address today. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> oh, thank you so much. Um... Let me say this, uh, you asked me the first question, how am I doing physically? And the answer is I'm doing well. I'm doing well, I'm healed. Uh, I had some injuries on the neck and on the head, but uh, these injuries were not destructive. Um, there are things that, uh, you know, I have some scars, but those scars will fade out with time. But let's just say I'm very much okay, and I can even protest. If you tell me to go to a protest right now, I can show up. Now, uh, number two, how am I doing emotionally? Honestly, let me be honest with you. I'm not doing well. <laughs> I'm not doing well. I'm not doing well emotionally. I'm not doing well emotionally because um, I'm supposed to be excited that I'm supported by Kenyans. But I'm so angry. And I'm not supposed to be so emotional. Lakini kuna vile I don't have happiness because 
um, first, you know, I was too realistic. And you've captured it very well. That I need to manage my expectations. I, I think I was too realistic. I, I had these expectations that uh, all Kenyans are tired. I'm now coming to the realization that uh, not all Kenyans are tired. Some are actually okay with the system as it is. They don't even know how it's hurting them. And they don't care. I actually thought that everybody knows how corruption affects them and how bad it is, and how the money stolen from them affects their economy. But I, I was shocked. I was shocked to find that uh, there are people who tell me, eh, mi ni kona biashara yangu, ni kona duka yangu, mi mambo ya siyasa sitaki. You know, I would take siyasa. Okay, see, I try to take a siyasa. But can you please be politically conscious? Because this politics is affecting your business. I would take. Man, say, man, me protect me as a yago. See, where is Sasa. <laughs> Sometimes I get angry with those kind of people. Sasa, si kuingine ni mechikwa na polisi na DCI. Sasa vile nilishikwa na DCI, uh, when the lawyer came to see me at Langata Police Station, I happened to ask him for his phone, so nikaenda online. Kuangalia Twitter, the first comment I read, that he have arrested myself. Ati, <laughs> uh, <laughs> ati, watu wana, wakona matusi, Eh, hey, wanasema uh, umejishika sasa umejishika sasa wataka simpathi yetu paka nasema eh hey, jameni had a very tight schedule today I had very important things I wanted to do hata kama ningetaka kujishika sio leo juu leo nilikuwa na vitu za maana sana kufanya so there is this person belittling your um, you know belittling your uh, ku, ile kuumia venye umeumia ama how much suffering you're going through they belittle it in fact they they make it look like you are the one to blame victim blaming and that's what the government wants of course i know they are going to arrest me many many more times i know between now and december i might be arrested probably five, six, seven times because they want to wear people down so they arrest you the first time you have your supporters you have more than 100 people with you they arrest you the second time you now have 60 people they arrest you the third time now it's 40 people left they arrest you the fourth time people are like doubting why are you being arrested all the time what is it 30 people now then finally unakuja kubaki peke yako and you know the enemy's uh, strategy is usually isolation if the enemy can isolate you and have you alone the enemy can do anything to you and um that scares me a lot the fact that uh, the enemy can successfully isolate me by playing mind games on the kenyan people so it's not like i expected everybody to be there but there are faces i expected that i didn't see and i was probably disappointed but i understood i've gotten over it i've managed my expectations next time nikishikwa hata nikuwe peke yangu <laughs> Even if I'm left alone, I'll not uh, complain. Ntasema andangangana na hiyo kitu peke yangu kimwanaume, ntakufa nayo, but at least I'm sure Keoti Sonko will not be missing uh, on that day. I'm also sure my wakili Solonka Pareno hata ni achilia, and probably my wife, so at least I have three people, and one or two friends, so those are five. So at least sita kwa peke yangu entirely. There are people who will be with me. Uh, so regarding emotion, I'm not doing okay because I have this anger inside me that I'm really trying to manage. I'm trying to su suppress it. Uh, uh, but I'm, I hope I can overcome it so that I can behave like a leader because sometimes when you let your anger get the better of you, you say things you shouldn't say or do things that you shouldn't do. I have a Aya, sasa, to you to Watch any, I had another one I forgot. How can we be of help and support to you? during this process of vampire diaries and a party that's a question i forgot to include there so let us also know how we can be of use to you and support to you i know you've been on spaces where you've asked people to come and join you when you're doing vampire diaries but also let us know how we can be of use and help the science funding all right so one of the things i actually need from the rest of the kenyans especially those
most of these guys you can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear him. I lost him. Yeah, so I, I think he has some yeah. permission. Can you kindly check on your mic? Because... No, but he has to. He has to. He has to have a co-host, though. Aki talkers, Nini. All right. Let me ask. Uh, are you, can you hear me now? Yeah, sure. You can hear. You just proceed. Yeah. All right. So I'm saying. Um, first, the major support that I needed, I've already gotten it. You support me All right. Let me ask. Uh, are you, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, sure. Oh no, just mute the other mic. Good. Now, KOT, uh, you are the one who confirms my mic. Aya, sour. So I'm saying I've already been supported in a, in a way that I don't deserve. Um, I really appreciate that support. I already have that support, so I'm not going to ask for anything more. All I can say is. Um, if you're here, you're listening to this X space and you work for the government, one of the things I desperately need is information. Uh, information is power. And uh, the more the information I have, the more I'm able to do. So come on, Awakia Gava in any government department, and you know that you can give me information that can help me. Please just inbox me that information or send it via proxy or send it using Telegram. I'm going to me a picture of you once. Once I view it, it disappears. Or uh, you can also um, register a pseudo account and give the information to me. I need information because there are many gaps that I'm unable to fill because of lack of information. Uh, secondly, um, I need you guys to start doing what you can do in your small ways. I'm already doing what I can in my small in, in, in my small way or big way. I need you to also start trying to do what you can do. You don't have to join me in whatever I'm doing. The day I want us maybe to occupy state house, or the day I want us to do occupy parliament, or the day we are going to occupy IABC or occupy Supreme Court, I'll marshal you to come and be with me but for now before we are there because we are not yet ripe the reason by the way si jaitisha maandamano ni juu hatu jaiva hatu jaiva kwa sababu bado hatuna numbers 70 percent of kenya lives in the villages and these 70 percent of kenya that lives in the villages we have not yet done civic education to them for them to understand why we demonstrate what is the importance of that demonstration what we usually achieve from demonstration, why they should be angry about the status of the nation, how corruption has affected them, how bad economic policies have affected their farming and other activities that they are involved in. So until we can do that, we cannot marshal enough numbers to do something that is substantial. So for that reason, I'm, I'm a bit hesitant for now. I'm going to, we are going to, you know, get there. We are going to do a very serious demonstration. But I hate doing things that are fail. Me spend kufanya kitu yenye na fail. So for that reason, it's better to spend more time preparing than to say occupy, then only 20 of us turn up. And you know, 20 of us cannot occupy anything. We are subdued using tear gas, and that becomes the end of it. Uh, so I need everybody to start doing what they can do in their small ways. I know, for example, Nonini is here on this space. He's listening. I've seen uh, part of his request and many other people who are doing great things in their small ways. So if you're a professional and you are in the finance sector, assist in terms of uh, analyzing financial statements and telling us the loopholes that we should be looking for and where the mathematics doesn't add up. If you are uh, an engineer, uh, make sure that uh, whenever you design a road or a building that it is up to standard. Ensure that you're not corrupt and that we get value for our money. And where corruption has happened, we request that you help us identify it because you're a professional. You, you should be knowing more than we know in terms of identifying the weaknesses of a, of a building or a road or where money may have been looted, public funds. So these are small things that everybody can 
do with the talent they already have or with the education that they already have. If you are a taxi driver, whenever you meet a client and the client is open to conversation, make sure you can inject. So inject the client, make sure that the client leaves your taxi a better person and willing to change Kenya. If you are an ex big wig, you know, host spaces like this, speak about these issues. If you are a writer, write about these things. If you are a teacher, teach children to hate corruption and to hate bad governance so that as they come up, they already have that seed in them. If you are a preacher, talk about the misuse of the church by politicians and talk about the church as a bastion of justice and as a source of truth and as a place where people run uh, as a place of refuge and they are safe. If you are a police officer, um, no, tell us what's going on in the police force. Uh, speak about your issues, even if it is through a pseudo account or if you need to speak through people like me, talk to us. Tell us what you're going through. Tell us what other police officers are going through. We know that the police force are not our enemies, but rather they are also suffering in this country where we are suffering. So if everybody can do a little, you know, kitu kidogo kidogo. If everybody can do the small things, together it will be a lot. I don't want to speak for too long because there are other people waiting. I'm too passionate, so sometimes when I'm given an opportunity to express my ideas, I can speak without end. So let me just cut it right there and say um, I'm fine. Uh, physically, I'm not fine emotionally, but I'm managing it. And what is helping me manage my emotions is number one, I'm listening to music, I'm reading books, I have an instrument that I love playing, so I play the instrument, and I have friends and family that love me very much, and I also play a game called Monopoly. So whenever I play that game, I feel like sanity is returning back to my mind.